Hello, everyone. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Um, I will ask uh, before we get started, um, so we'll start in a couple minutes, um, that if anyone is at liberty or has are in is in a space where they can show their video, we ask that you show their video. Just makes it more of an inclusive space. Um, it feels like you're not just talking to a screen of um, blank faces and and letters and names. So um, if you can, we'd love to see your beautiful faces. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be getting started in just a second. Um, so thanks again for joining us. Hello. So I'm just going to say hair, right? Because um, Joy Hutton, who is our Google Digital Coach, has like the bomb hair and it is out and her crown is beautiful. Um, thank you all so much for uh, joining us. My name is uh, John Nichols. I am the Business Programs Coordinator for the Emancipation Economic Development Council. Um, we are a nonprofit uh, in the historic Third Ward. Um, and we are tasked with the preservation, the revitalization, and the protection of the, um, uh, the cultural importance uh, and heritage um, of Third Ward, as well as uh, doing our part to ensure that while the development that, uh, the rampant development that Third Ward is undergoing um, is happening, that the displacement of um, the current residents 
is minimized. And so we do that through a number of uh, programs. Uh, this particular area of it, um, this extension of it is through our business support that we provide for um, businesses in third ward um, and uh, through our training program that we provide for not only residents and businesses in third ward, but those who are third ward adjacent, um, which would mean those that may have been uh, displaced from the community, those who have businesses in the community but don't live in the community, those who uh, um, want to move into the community but can't afford to, and those that are in communities that are similar to. So um, thank you all again for joining us. Uh, this is done through a partnership between uh, the Emancipation Park uh, Conservancy and the Emancipation uh, Economic Development Council. Um, and then of course it's hosted um, are facilitated by uh, Grow with Google, which is a partnership that exists uh, between the EEDC and uh, Google. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Muhammad to share with you just a little bit about um, the Emancipation Park Conservancy um, and the wonderful sponsors who make this all possible for us. John, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Mohammed Abdur Rashid. I'm the program manager and partnership liaison here at Emancipation Park uh, Conservancy. Uh, since its inception in 2014, Emancipation Park Conservancy has served over 15,000 program and event participants and has reached over 200,000 globally. The Conservancy was formed to create a renewed cultural learning and recreational gathering place in the city of Houston. Our mission is to enhance Emancipation Park by preserving its integrity and enriching its heritage as a local, state, national, international landmark. Our strategic outreach focus is supported by three pillars being education, economic empowerment, and health and wellness. The work that we do uh, in the community would not be possible without the support of our sponsors and our partners. So with that, I'd like to thank John uh, EEDC for partnering with us. And I'd like to extend uh, a big thank you to Google for their support, as well as to uh, Comcast and NBC Universal uh, for their sponsorship and support of our programming and their commitment to our community. John, thank you, and back to you. Awesome, I appreciate it. I feel like we're in a newscast. This really is. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Joy Hutton, who is all things business and diversity and tech. Um, she has several businesses um, on various platforms. She has been not only um, a uh, business coach and consultant and strategist, as well as having her own. Um, she's also this digital coach for Google, which um, I thought was a great partnership. So someone who can really talk about the impact of these tools with regard to business and not just the tools in and of itself. Um, and she's beautiful and has the hair, right? We love the hair. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Joy and stop sharing my screen. And uh, she will introduce herself and kind of tell us what this training is going to look like today. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen first. All right, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Great. Okay, let me just I lost my chat box over here. Okay, just so I can see questions. If anybody has any, okay. Hello, everybody. Good to see you here tonight. I know this is getting close to dinner time, so we're gonna we're gonna make this this quick but informational, and um, you will walk away with some things that you can implement immediately into your business. So, if you are in the right place today, this is sell online with e-commerce tools. And so just a few housekeeping things, you can ask me questions in the chat. So I'll be periodically looking over at the chat just to make sure that you all get your questions answered today. And also make sure you're on mute. But at the end, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions. And then also, I would love to see your faces. So I'm not just talking to myself over here and, um, you know, so turn those cameras on. And also, if you are, drop a one in the chat if you are currently selling a product 
or if you would like to sell a product. And that is obviously why you are here today because you wanna learn how to get that product online. So, um, okay, Atum, Dakira, okay, great, John, all right. So I see Sir Trinia's here. We've got Renata in the building, Whitney, Sylvester, Lillian, Gina, Sean, okay, Jordan. All right, let's see, Ashanti's in here. So we got everybody in here, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And um, as John said, my name is Joy M. Hutton and I am the girl with Google Digital Coach for Houston. I am the founder of Joy of Consulting, a management consulting firm. I like to say that we manage the chaos of people and processes. And I'm also the founder of On The Go Glam, which is an on-demand platform that provides beauty services to men and women in the comfort of their home, office, or hotel. So I'm excited about today. Thank you again, John, for having me here. And again, you know, ask questions if you have any along the way. Feel free to take screenshots and you can at me at joy underscore M underscore H on social media. I'll repost because I want to know that you learned something here today. So feel free to do that. Hashtag grow with Google, hashtag digital coaches and um, Joy Lynn drop that in the chat for you guys as well. So in today's workshop, I will explain why it's critical for retailers to sell online. And of course, potential customers need to be able to find your products too. So to help with that, I'm going to start by talking about two Google products, and that is a business profile. Some of you may know it as Google My Business, and then also the Google Merchant Center. And then after that, I'm going to introduce one e-commerce tool, which is Shopify, which a lot of people may already be using. And then I'll show you the basics of setting up an e-commerce website. And then I'll close out the workshop with a quick recap and some more resources. So every day, hundreds of millions of people turn to Google to find, discover, shop. And this is not just limited to Google search. People discover products when they browse Google news feeds, watch YouTube videos, and check their Gmail. So research shows that online shopping is on the rise. And we definitely saw that it, during the pandemic. I got got by Amazon, Target, all these retailers, but shoppers go online first in 60% of shopping occasions. And online shopping drives visitors to stores as well. And a global survey found that 45% of shoppers buy online and then pick up in store. So again, we saw a lot of that, especially during the pandemic. So retail, well, still, we still in a pandemic, but we see it now. So retailers need to show their products online because it drives sales. 58% of global purchases were prompted by something that the shoppers saw online. And people want to know before they go. I know I do. So 46% of shoppers confirm inventory online before visiting a store visiting a store because nobody has time to waste gas out here in these streets. So the takeaway is you need to get your products online and even if the sales happen offline, all right? So think about it. The average online shopping journey has over 140 touch points. That's a lot. Each touch point influences what people buy and who they buy it from. So this slide just lists a few of those touch points on Google where US-based customer interactions can happen. So you see Google search, Google images, the business profile on Google, the shopping tab, shopping ads, and experimental places like Google Lens. So how do we do this? How can you get your products to appear on Google? So we're gonna start with the Google business profile. And again, some of you may know that as Google My Business. So for anyone who's not familiar with it, we're gonna do a quick overview. And your business profile helps your business stand out on Google search and maps. It's available for businesses that make in-person contact with customers, either at a physical store or in a specified service area. So I just wanna break that down a little bit because some people may say, well, I don't have a brick and mortar location, so I can't have a Google business profile and that's not true so I have a consultancy but we are mostly remote we don't have a physical location so but I'm still able to list my business on uh, Google my business on the business and have a business profile 
as long as I have a specified service area and I meet customers where they are, then it's fine. You can have a business profile. So on this slide, you see the business profile for a retailer called the Spice House, and it includes details about their Chicago store, shout out to Chicago, such as their address, phone number, description, and then this slide also highlights a detail that appears in their business profile, which is their product. So in this example, the feature product is the Essential Spices Collection. So you can see a product photo, the name, the price range. Clicking on the product reveals even more details. And then once you create or claim your business profile, you can add your products there too. So this is also a free tool. Just wanted to mention that. A lot of the tools that Google has for small businesses are free 99. So we all love free when you're an entrepreneur. I know I do. So before you can use any of Google's products, though, you need to be signed into a Google account, which is also free, unless you have a business email account, then you have to pay for that. But a regular Gmail address, it's free, and you can sign up, and if you don't, go ahead and do that right now, and you can follow along, get your business profile set up. So for today's workshop, I'm just gonna assume that everyone is a good student and that they have a Google account. They have a Google email address and you've already created and verified your business profile. But if you're not, that's okay. You can do this later. You can go to google.com forward slash business to get started. And while we're doing this on the workshop, you can follow along and get verified and all that good stuff. It takes a few minutes. So you go to google.com forward slash business. The dashboard is pictured on this slide here, and you can see the label products. You're going to click that to access the product editor. And then you're going to follow the steps to upload a product photo. You enter the product name, create or choose a category, and then you have an option to include your price, price range, description, and a button that can link to a product details page on your website. And I always like to tell people that before you start running ads, take advantage of your business profile because again, it is free. You can advertise your products on there for free. You can put promos, you can um, put events, you can put all types of stuff on there and they don't charge you for this. So allow a few minutes for your newly added products to show online. But then in the meantime, you can preview how your product will appear to customers by clicking see it on Google. So you can click on a product to make changes or delete it at any time. So this is what the same product looks like when you click it or click it from the business profile on Google. And again, Laura, the slide shows I'm sorry to interrupt you. Just a yeah. quick question for us mm -hmm. all. Um, so when we go to Google and we type in, I've been renovating my house, right? So I'm looking for floating shelves. When I go in and I type floating shelves and then in that little shop, like little drop down between the search bar and then all of the links. When we put our images on um, Google, when we put our things on Google, is that how these things are listed? Is that how they end up? They, I know that there's some advertising and all of those things that happen. Yeah, so the there's screen. Google ads that have images and then there's Google shop where your products appear. So right. when you put your products on your Google profile, then that's where they will pop up in the Google shop. Okay, gotcha. With answer. relation to the search of yeah. mm -hmm. whatever somebody does, right? Okay, yeah, gotcha. So for you to run a picture ad, you, or for it to appear in the ad search results, you have to actually have an ad that has pictures in it. But it could appear in Google Shop, and that's when you um, link everything in your business profile. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the slide here shows that you can see all the product information, including a call to action button where it says learn more and you can name your call to action button wherever you want. But clicking this button sends you right to the product page on the Spice House's website. So there's no charge to add these products again and click on the product and clicks on the products are free as well. So this is how you add your products to your business profile. But what about all the other places on Google where products can surface? So just like you were asking, so we have the Google Merchant Center. So retailers use the Google Merchant Center to make their store and product information available to shoppers across Google. So again, the Google Merchant Center is free and you don't need to advertise your products there either. 
However, if you do want to advertise and show shopping ads on Google, then you need to set up the Merchant Center account first. And so that's why I was saying to answer John's question about the ads. So that's how that works together. So the Google Merchant Center is a free tool that helps you upload your store and product data to Google and make it available for Google Shopping, shopping ads, and other Google services, okay? So you're going to add your products in one place, the Merchant Center, and then these products, again, are eligible to appear in multiple places across Google. So we're going to take a look at a few places where you might see them. So first, products and extra product information may appear in Google search results. And so this slide shows a series of product images with information beneath at the top of the Google search results page. And these are shopping ads. So that's what I was talking about earlier. And below these ads are Google's organic search results. And we're gonna get into ads a little bit later. But Google's organic search results typically include basic information, a title, a description, and a link. But some results show even more. So this extra information is called a rich snippet. And a snippet can really help a product stand out. So this slide shows the Spice House's ground fenugreek seeds in the search results. And then it's all jazzed up with all this extra info, like a star rating. It's also, it also includes product details, like price, availability of the seeds, all of that. So how can Google add that extra information to your products when they appear in Google search results? So first, you should talk to your website developer about adding what's called a structured data markup. And I know this is technical, but this is what people have to do. Um, and, and also, Google has um, a great support team. So if you go to support.google.com, they can also send you the instructions to do this as well if you need help with setting this up. But again, you want them to add structured data markup to your website. And this is basically a labeling system added to your web pages. So the labels help Google and other web platforms automatically understand your site and pull information like product data um, from, from the different pages, which helps you appear in search results. So in this example, one attribute from the Merchant Center, the product's availability is displayed for free in the organic search results. And then you can see that the fenugreek seeds are in fact in stock. But if you have structured data on your website, it can also be used to automatically update products in the Merchant Center. So you don't have to do both. So we could spend the rest of a workshop talking about all the technical details, but I'm not gonna do that to you all because it's a lot. But if you wanna work on improving how your products appear, you can set up the Merchant uh, Center and talk to your developer or again, um, support.google.com. Okay, so next, products from the Merchant Center can appear for free in the shopping tab for US searches. So you're gonna visit google.com, do a search and then click shopping at the top to see the results. Or you can start by visiting shopping.google.com. So you can see products, you can also see products in Google images. So you visit google.com, do a search and then you click images at the top to see the results or you can go to images.google.com. And you can tell that the image in the results is connected to a product for sale if it has that product label that's called a product annot annotation. And you usually see that kind of that price tag. Um, so the label indicates that you can click the product to get more information. So I definitely recommend doing a search on the types of products you sell so you can see what's showing up in Google results. Okay. And then Google Lens, which this was something new that I learned about by being a digital coach, never knew about it, but this is new. You should definitely try it. But with Google Lens, you can use your phone's camera to search in a visual way. And it's basically like searching with an image instead of words. So this is an example of an experimental place where products may appear on Google. So this this slide shows a Google Lens search using a product photo from the Spice House's website. So
So Google Lens basically suggested similar photos from the Spice House's website, including links to the score corresponding product images. Crazy, right? Technology is just too much. It's too much nowadays. <laughs> so Google Lens probably won't give your product the same volume of exposure as a regular Google search, but it's an example of how Google tries to show relevant products in places where customers may be looking. And it doesn't hurt. More options, the better. So if you want to try Google Lens, you have to download the Google app from Google Play for Android or the App Store for iPhone. And Google Lens is also available in the camera app of um, some Android devices and it's part of the Google Photos app too. Okay, so then last but not least, Merchant Center helps retailers advertise products on Google. So you've probably seen shopping ads and they are more than just text. They can do photo, title, price, store name, all of that. And then shopping campaigns can be used to promote online and local inventory. So local inventory ads help nearby shoppers know what you have in stock, potentially driving more sales to your physical store. And then in order to run these type of ads, again, you need to have a Merchant Center account. So the basic process is you create that Merchant Center account, you add your, your products, you connect your Merchant Center to Google Ads, and then you create shopping campaigns to advertise your products on Google. And then voila. So a high level overview of how the Merchant Center works. When you create your free account, you upload the products. Um, we'll, go through, um, we'll go through some other examples. I think they have other examples if they haven't removed those slides. But your, when you upload your products, your products can appear across Google. So to start setting up an account, you're going to go to g.co forward slash Merchant Center Setup. Okay. And then we just gave you a, a high high level um, overview uh, overview of how to, to set that up. And remember, you need to have a Google account. So you go to that link and then you sign in with your Google account. Next, you're going to enter information about your business, including the name. Uh huh. Uh, one quick question for you. Yep. So when we go into the Google Merchant account and we have to have a Google, we have to have our own Google account, email account to do that. Right, or the Google account to do that. Uh, yeah. If I use my personal Google account to set up the Merchant Center, can I still link that to my business email? Yep. Okay. Thank you're, you. You're, you're talking about your business website? Yeah, my business, business website. Right, my business yeah, website, website and all of this. Yes. So that it's not mm -hmm. my personal data that's being used, but it's my business data that's being yeah, used. Yeah, as long as you, because it's going to ask you for your business website, your business name. So like in this step right here, you enter your business name. So it'll ask you for all of that stuff to make sure that you own the business. Right. And so then all of the communication that I get from the Merchant Center, from Google to me, with regard to this account, will go yeah. to that Whatever that email, okay, whatever is that email using. that you set up the the merchant center with. But the but with regard to any communication information that I want to give to my customers, like if I want to give them a phone number or an email, can I still put in the one to my business? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So here you're going to enter um, the information about your business, the name, um, the country where your hair headquarters are, your time zone. And then you're going to select the checkout options that apply to your business. So the Merchant Center lists three options, selecting on your website, which means that customers can see your products on Google, but they'll go to your website to buy it. You can select on Google, which means that customers can see your products on Google and buy them there. And in this case, you actually don't <clears throat> even need a website. You can just select the service called buy on Google to complete the transaction. And this service is still in pilot, but it, you know, people are using it. And then finally, if you select at your local store, customers can see your products on Google, but are then directed to visit your local store to buy them. So you can change these checkout options in your account at any time. You're not bound to them. Okay. And then next, 
you can link your merchant center to third-party platforms. So this can simplify the setup process for your merchant account. So Shopify is an option. And then we'll talk about how that platform integrates with the merchant center in just a second. And then you can add more tools and integrations at any time. So this image shows the relevant merchant center page with the question, what other tools that you use? So Shopify and PayPal are displayed as options with check boxes. You know, you have shop pay, Facebook pay, all these different options for people to check out now. So it'll ask you what you use. So this is the merchant center overview page. So if you're just setting up this merchant center, prompts are displayed at the top to help you complete the setup. So the left navigation also includes products, which links to the area where you can add your images and, and manage your products. You have performance where you can view reports and then you have growth where you can access suggestions for improving visibility and driving more sales on Google, which that's always the goal. More sales, more money. So if you selected the checkout options on your website or at your local store, you must verify your website before your products can appear on Google. And there are three ways to do that. You can do it through Google Analytics or Tag Manager or add an HTML file to your website. Again, that's a little technical, but that's how you do it. And then if you use Shopify for your e-commerce store, the website is automatically verified when connected to the Merchant Center, okay? So now that your Merchant Center is set up, the next step is for you to add your products. So you start by clicking products in the left navigation, which is highlighted in this screenshot. And then you can click the button to add individual products, multiple products, or a combination of both. So when you add an individual product, you will enter information about it in the Merchant Center. So some fields like, again, that title, the link where you can purchase it, the price are required. And there are a lot of option, optional fields too. So for example, if you sell products with multiple sizes and colors, then you can include variations of that product rather than create a separate entry for each option. So products that are added individually then must be edited individually. So you can use can a combination. A question? I'm sorry, uh -huh. can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. When you're adding this, if you wanted to add a product, if you've tied it to your website, like I have a Shopify website, do I still have to add each product individually or will it? No, it'll it'll um, sync with it'll sync with Shopify. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the beauty of Google kind of working with some of these merchant accounts because then you don't have to update it on both because that's a headache. Yeah. Um, so uh, product feeds make it, uh, where was I? Okay, you can use the combination of individual product uploads and product feeds and product feeds make it easier to add multiple products to your merchant center. So we're gonna take a look at that next. So a product feed is a file that contains all the information about the products you want to show on Google. So this file includes information about your products called attributes. So to create a product feed in Merchant Center, in the Merchant Center, you will start by entering some basic information like language. So in this screenshot, it will prompt you to enter country of sale, language, things like that. Then next, you'll give your product feed a name. So this will not appear on Google. It's just so you know how to identify, identify this feed in your account. So then you're going to choose how you want to add products to your feed. And if you're just getting started, again, one of the easiest ways is using Google Sheets with the template that is provided. So you see on this image, the name and input, input method in the tab. Um, in the Merchant Center, and then you have the prompt to enter your primary feed name. So I know, again, technical, but there are ways that Google gives you these prompts so that you can easily set this up. So don't be scared. It's just, it's just a lot of information. So if you select Google Sheets, the Merchant Center displays two options. It says use a template or select another spreadsheet because maybe you already have your inventory in a spreadsheet. So you would choose the second option, again, if you already had an existing product feed that is set up to work in a merchant center. 
So let's assume that you're starting from scratch. So you, so you choose the template and the screenshot shows a setup tab again, where you're prompted to register a Google spreadsheet by selecting generate a new Google spreadsheet from a template or select an existing Google spreadsheet. It makes it super easy for you. So this slide shows the Google Sheets Merchant Center template before products are added. So it already gives you the, the headers. You don't have to think about what headers to include. So there's a link to instructions for creating your feed as well as product feed specifications. Before creating this feed, make sure you read the instructions and the spec specifications to make sure that you're setting it up correctly because you don't want to miss any important fields because people need to see all the information. So the detail on this slide highlights the columns in the spreadsheet and each column again corresponds to a product attribute. And the Merchant Center has specific requirements. So for example, availability has three options, in stock, out of stock, pre-order, and um, it, but again, it gives you, it walks you through all of that so that you know what you're doing. So once your Merchant Center is complete, then your products can appear on Google in, in different places. So I talked about Google search, images, shopping, shopping ads, and experimental places like Google Lens. But there's still an important topic. So someone already brought Shopify up, but how to actually sell the products on your website. So we talked about how to do it on Google, but you wanna do it on your website too. So many small businesses use third-party e-commerce tools to power their online stores, and there are lots of great options available. So today we're going to talk about Shopify. And you may remember that during the Merchant Center setup, there was an option to connect to Shopify. So if you have Shopify, you can connect it to the Merchant Center, and that connection means that you can skip the website verification step. So let's take a look at Shopify. And this is a platform where people use this to grow their customer base, develop better customer relationships, grow their sales, and of course, grow their small businesses. So we're gonna go over Shopify, what it is, why it exists. Then we'll talk about, yes, Nagira, it is. It is definitely the GOAT. It's so user-friendly too. Um, and then we'll talk about how you can easily and quickly start selling your products through Shopify, regardless of your knowledge base. And then the last piece we'll touch on is how to connect Shopify and Google to make sure that your products are getting found. For that, let me get some water. So understanding Shopify starts with understanding its mission to make commerce better for everyone. And they literally do. So every business owner should have the best tools to compete and thrive against much bigger businesses. Shopify was founded in Canada 15 years ago and is now being used in 175 countries. The platform is used by 1 million merchants who collectively have generated over 155 billion in sales using Shopify. It's crazy. Small businesses around the world. During COVID um, in, in 2020, many businesses, many business owners found themselves needing to pivot to stay online. And, you know, I tell businesses this all the time. If you didn't learn anything during the pandemic, it is that you need to have a product online. Even if it's not a physical product, it could be a digital product, an ebook, something. You need to have something that you can sell. So many offline only retailers turn to online sales and some have e some have cut out on, on the other side or some have come out on the other side even stronger <clears throat> because they pivoted and diversified their business. <clears throat> so Shopify allows you to sell your physical products in your own personalized e-commerce website. So an example of what Shopify can look like from a real business, we talked about the Spice House, and you may notice that the site looks super professional, easy to navigate, and the pages load quickly. Also important is that the site's going to show up on Google. So Shopify sites are designed to convert at the highest possible rate, meaning that it generates the most sales per visitor to your site. So you can see here Spice House's website, they, they have bestsellers, meal recipes, reviews, testimonials, food, photos, all that. 
So to get started with Shopify, you go to shopify.com, create an account, and you can do this by entering your email address and you, they give you an opportunity to start a free trial. And then once you have an account, then you'll be able to log in to Shopify from any device as long as you have an internet connection. Okay, so once you set up an account, you'll be asked a few questions to help Shopify get to know you and your business better. So once you filled in these que questions, you click next once you and you have the option to skip this step as you if you like. But they'll ask you, you know, are you already selling? What's your current revenue? Which industry will you be operating in? Are you setting up a store for a client? And then once you create your account, you will be logged into your admin section. So think of this section like the cockpit, your dashboard, or control center for your website. So from here, you can modify your theme, add products, view and fulfill an order, create email marketing campaigns, view reports. It's like it literally does everything. So you also need to fill in payment delivery and pickup op options, tax settings, don't forget those taxes now, terms of services and return policy. But first things first, we're going to talk about again how to get these products online. So when we talk about products on Shopify, again, it's not just physical products. If you have any digital goods that you might sell, such as an online course, an ebook, you can also put these on, on Shopify as well. When you add products to Shopify, they will automatically be ready to sell across all of your channels. So if you're an established business and you have a spreadsheet of your inventory, which guys, please, I hope everybody is tracking inventory because that's important. You have the option to upload that. But let's say you're adding a brand new product, okay? The slide shows here, add and manage products. And then you, you click on add product. So you click on add product and it will be, bring up a form with a lot of fields and the setup takes a little time, you know, and initially you don't have to put in every detail, but you do want to think about a few things. Make sure to give your product a name, a description. For example, the Spice House might have a product called Ground Jamaican All Spice Berries. Well, in the description, they add relevant details about the product. So you see the short description there on the page. It does not have to be a dissertation, just a little descri description about your product. You also wanna make sure you add your product images because people wanna see what you're selling. Visuals are a key factor in whether a customer decides to make a purchase or not. And then finally, you gotta add the price. So in this example, the Spice House sells their ground Jamaican allspice berries for $6.99. So once you submitted these details, your product will be ready to sell across all channels, including Google. All right, so let's look at how you can connect Google to Shopify. And Renata, you were asking about this, so this will be key for you. So Shopify allows you to connect to your customers wherever they happen to be on your website and store a third party flat platform, social media, and it helps you manage sales across all those channels. So you want to connect Shopify to Google because that's where people go to look for things and it's free. So to add Google, you're going to click on sales channels in the sidebar. And then you're gonna click on the plus sign next to Google. So you see that screenshot here, so save that for later so you can do that later. When you add Google as a sales channel, it will sync in real time without your shop, with your Shopify account. So again, if you make any changes in products in either Google or Shopify, it will sync on all channels. And then you're gonna click add sales channel to proceed. So to set up the Google channel, you'll need to sign in with your Google account, and this will require your Google email address, as always, to get in there. So the screenshot shows the page you'll see when connecting to your Google account. So you connect Google account. All right. <clears throat> and then to use Shopify's Google channel, your Shopify store needs to meet a few requirements to sync with the Google Merchant Center. So your Shopify store has to be set up online and published. You need to have relevant payment and contact information. You need to have a refund policy in terms of service and the countries and currencies you will be selling in. So this screen, screenshot shows that once you've completed that checklist, all the requirements are green and you're ready to go. 
So once these are met, then it's time to sync your product feed. Don't forget to do this. So you need a merchant center account to do this. So make sure you set up that merchant account. So click on the get started button to link or create a merchant center account, okay? And this will take you to a page to connect your Google Merchant Center account directly within the Google channel. So if you don't have an account, you can create one within the Google channel, that's okay. And this step is important to make sure, like for example, with the Spice House shop and product information, it's important to make sure that it's in Google and can be surfaced to shoppers across Google. So the Google channel imports your existing product data from Shopify to Google's Merchant Center. And I know this sounds like a lot, but it, it works all, it all works together for your good. <laughs> so remember that um, ground Jamaican Allspice product we talked about earlier, well, the Google channel will automatically fetch that data so that you don't have to enter it twice or worry about any mistakes. It's free to show your products in Google's Merchant Center. And once you do that, you also have the option to advertise those products with Google Shopping ads. We talked about that a little earlier. All right, so now you've linked your Merchant Center account to Shopify. And at this, pay, at this stage, the products are not syncing yet. To do that, you need to make sure that you select the market or the country that you will sell in and your shipping settings. So this shows you where you configure your product feed settings by entering those details, okay? And finally, and, and guys, I'm telling you all this information today, but literally Shopify and Google are pretty user-friendly and walk you through different prompts on how to set up these things as well. So finally, you have the option to connect your Google Ads account because you want to run ads. To, to get started with smart shopping campaigns. So these are paid ads that help your products appear in front of shoppers on YouTube, Gmail, Google, search across Google. Um, so to set up a smart shopping campaign, you just sync your products and set a daily budget and Google will optimize your campaign and choose the best time and place to show your products to shoppers. Now, with ads, start small first because you want to see what's working. You know, a lot of people will tell you, you need to put thousands of dollars in ads. Start small first. There are people who have done $50 and it's converted to hundreds of dollars. But you want to test out an ad, run an ad for seven days first, then two weeks, then three, then a month. But see what's working. You do this to test it small first. You do this so that you can see what's working and you can also get data on who your target audience is because maybe you've been targeting the wrong people all along. Then when you see who's actually searching for your product, you're like, huh, okay. And maybe I need to change my marketing strategy. So think about that. So I know we've covered a lot of ground today, but remember that both Google and Shopify are designed to make it easy as possible to get started. You don't have to be good to start. You just have to start to be good. All right, so that's a wrap for today's workshop. I'm gonna give you some more Google workshop, uh, Google uh, resources. So Grow My Store is a free Google tool designed for retailers who sell online, in store or both. And as long as you have a website, it can analyze and assess the customer experience. This is a great tool because um, the report evaluates a range of factors such as product information, store details, personalization, website performance. The tool also measures how fast your site loads, if it's mobile friendly, if it's secure, and you can receive a personal, personalized report plus tips for making site improvements. And then they have a tutorial. So you can go to g.co forward slash grow forward slash quick help. But for that grow um, my store is g.co forward slash grow my store. Um, but in the G, uh, the G.co grow forward slash quick help, you can search for the video. How can I improve my we my retail website? Okay. And then next is another free Google tool called Local Opportunity Finder. And that is g.co forward slash local opportunity finder. This tool helps small business owners improve their presence on Google search and maps by analyzing their business profile on Google. So we talked about that business profile earlier. 
And again, it's free to set that up, you all. And what they do is they send you a postcard in the mail, very old school, but they send you this postcard in the mail where you can um, uh, get your uh, verification code. So you can't get verified online. They send you the, the, po the postcard in the mail and then, then, then you put in your verification code. But you have access to limited features before they actually verify your profile. Okay, so again, there are tutorials on this as well in that same quick help uh, site. All right, so you can continue learning more about how to grow your business on Grow with Google on Air. They have tons of on-demand videos. You can also take another workshop with me, um, but g.co forward slash grow on air is where you can find more virtual workshops and, and webinars. And then my next workshop is after Thanksgiving, um, where we will be talking about design thinking for entrepreneurs. So um, I do workshops every month. You can always sign up with me. Um, maybe we'll do workshops in the future with um, EEDC. Did I say that right? Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, but for now, this is what I'm doing uh, week after next, design thinking for entrepreneurs. And then if you were here today, go to this site to claim your swag, free swag from Google, g.co forward slash grow forward slash attended. And that's, that's in the chat as well. And then if you found this helpful today, please complete the survey so that I know you all learned something. Um, and then I will take questions. Let me stop sharing my screen so I can see your beautiful faces. All right, oh, more people came. Okay, let's see. Let's see if you guys have questions. Feel free to unmute or drop a question in the chat. I don't bite. Any questions? No questions? We're shy today? I have a question. Um, yeah. Will this be available for us? Like the, um, the slides be available for us? Um, and the information for this? No, unfortunately, they do not let us distribute the slides. So that's why I got to take notes and screenshots. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, stuff. they don't let us. Yeah, they don't let us share the slides. But I will be offering this course again. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. And for those that are here, we have the video. So we, re we did record. So we'll yes. be able to, to go back through the video. But thank you for that. You're welcome. Any so, other uh, questions? Who's going to go yes, and set up their uh, merchant center? Uh, yes, I have a question. So do you recommend selling on Google over selling on Amazon? <laughs> How you going to ask me that question? Of course, I'm going to say Google, you know, I'm here with Google <laughs> Digital Coach. You know, I think yeah. that Honestly, I think there are benefits to both. Um, the, the difference between Google and Amazon is that with Google, your, um, with Google, your, your products will appear across different um, platforms that Google oversees. So like YouTube, for example, you know, YouTube and Google are connected. Amazon is Amazon. Now, Amazon does have, they just started an advertising program, I think over the past year or so, but um, Amazon's going to advertise you on Amazon. But with Google, you know, they have what's called display network. So if you have ever clicked on an ad, if you were on Google and you search for, let's just say a pair of shoes, and then you go to another website and that same pair of shoes pops up on that, a different website. That is what's called a Google display network because there are websites where you're approved to run ads on your site. So that ad is going to follow you on whatever site you're on through, through the Google display network. So you, it, it's just, I just feel like Google has a lot more options as far as where your products um, can appear. You know, you saw Google, Google ads, the images, the search, the map, you know, you, you just have a lot of different different avenues to to advertise. <clears throat> um, Patrina, today's name of event and date is not an option on the site. I'm not sure which site. 
I don't see Patrina. Uh, Patrina, which Hi. side are you looking at? Yes, I just clicked on the link that you dropped in the chat for the Google um, swag. Oh, you oh of- yeah, sorry. You know what? That's because this was not through. It wasn't one of my workshops. Ah, sorry. Okay. Well, if okay. you come on the 30th, then you can you can get your swag. <laughs> I that forgot was- this is a partner <laughs> workshop, so it wouldn't be dang. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get it added though. And I'll let, I'll let John know, but yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. I have linked my, um, my Shopify Google and I just went back in because I did it several months back mm-hmm. and Google gave me all type of, um, it didn't post half of my products. And it was like, well, you're missing like the type and this, but all of that's completed on my Shopify side. Should I reach out? Like, do I need to get some support from Google? Because I'm not understanding yeah, I, why it didn't sync and move over because if it's showing on my website and on Facebook and Instagram, it should Do you show have a merchant center different. account? Do you have mm-hmm. a merchant center account as well? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will reach out to Google to see what's going on. Support um, support.google.com because if you have a merchant center account, you've connected, you know, through the the Google Shopify channel and did everything that it told you to do, then it should be syncing up. So something is something's Something not specific. connecting there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, hopefully everyone found this helpful and get those e-commerce sites up there and get to selling. And um, yeah, thank you all for coming. And thank you, John, for having me. I appreciate you. And um, hopefully we can do this again. Yes. Thank you all so much for coming again. This was, thank you, Joy. Uh, Thank you, Grow with Google. Um, thank you, Joy Lynn, for uh, working at Chatbox for us. Um, this was great, uh, incredibly informative. Uh, and I know that that's something that um, all of the entrepreneurs that and business owners that we support can absolutely use. Um, I learned a couple of new things um, that I did not know that Google was doing. And so I think it's um, uh, really, really informative and it's been very helpful. Um, thank you to the Emancipation Economic Development Council, the Emancipation Avenue Main Street, um, the Emancipation Park Conservancy, um, Grow with Google, and of course our sponsors, uh, Comcast, NBC Universal. Um, I'm going to drop a link for those that are still here in the um, chat box. It is a quick survey. It'll probably take you all of maybe two minutes or so to complete. Um, if you could please complete that survey. Um, Once you complete that survey, those are the emails that we'll be using to distribute your gifts for attending. Um, These are from uh, the the partnership for the series. Um, I'm going to work on getting Joy's um, uh, for you if we can. Um, So we'll do that. And then once the video is um, uploaded to the Emancipation Park Conservancy's YouTube page, we will be sending out um, a link for that, as well as some uh, quick notes that I've taken that I think are incredibly important for you all. So uh, thank you so much for attending. Thank you for saying yes and showing up for yourselves. This has been incredibly great. Joy, yes, we will be doing several more of these. Um, You're awesome. So I appreciate it. Thank Thank you. you. Y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you. See you later. Thank you.